Hello everyone, uh, my name is Xiao Ping. I'm the Managing Director of XP Education. Uh, thanks again for subscribing to our YouTube channels. Now today I'm going to present you guys in the topic of corporate finance. More specifically, it will be around the topics that is presented to you guys in lecture one of your studies. Now today's topic I want to first talk about is on the notion of IPO. Now what exactly is IPO? Well, IPO stands for Initial Public Offerings. This is where a company uh, goes public for the very first time, yes? Now remember, uh, once a company goes onto the market, any subsequent equity issues will be considered as a seasoned equity issue, or more specifically, it's what we call SEO, yes? Now, why exactly do companies want to go IPO? Well, first of all, it's about accessing a more cheaper and more dense uh, capital, yes? Now, you think about it. Imagine that you are a small uh, private company, yes? Now, obviously, there's going to be a certain restriction in terms of how much exactly you can borrow and also what is the amount of capital that is available to you. Now, once you actually physically IPO'd, this means that you can access a lot more cheaper uh, finances by debt and also you have this extra option by equity, yes? So, what about the second one? It's about this reputation um, or brand uh, awareness, yes? So, think about Alibaba. Now, Alibaba is pretty much a well-known name in China, but before they actually go IPO'd, not many people around the world actually know what Alibaba does and also well, who is Jack Ma. Now, once Alibaba has floated in the US, this name becomes more of a household name because everybody knows Alibaba, what the company does, and what are the histories behind the founding partners. Now, one of the phenomena I want to talk about in terms of IPO is about the key topics about under pricing, yes? Now, underpricing is something that is very uh, relevant and also very important in your course of studies. Now, first of all, I want to say, well, what exactly is uh, underpricing? Now, the example such that the underpricing is essentially saying that the listing price take away the price you actually, or the offer price, divided by the offer Price. Yes, so it is the listing price, take away the offer price, divided by the, uh, the offer price. So in the example of Alibaba, so we know that the close of trading price is going to be equal to $93.89 and the substitution price is actually equal to $68. And then we say that 93.89 take away the 68 price divided by 68, and that is going to be given us in terms of the percentage of underpricing, yes? So, there are actually seven key reasons behind why uh, underpricing exists, yes? And now I'm going to take you guys through this one by one to make sure that you guys truly understand what exactly constitutes uh, underpricing, yes? So, let's write this one off first. The number one reason in terms of underpricing is, of course, our winner's curse, yes? So, the first one I'll talk about is the winner's uh, curse, okay? Now, this is something that often gets confused about students. Well, winner's curse, what exactly is winner's curse? Well, it's simply because of this information uh, asymmetry, yes? So, in a market, there will be both the sophisticated investors and also the unsophisticated investors. Now, imagine that you are an unsophisticated investor and for every IPO you participate, it is always overpriced. Now, how do you feel? You probably feel that, well, every single time I try to invest in a particular IPO, I'm always losing out. So essentially, uh, if you are losing money on all IPOs, then you will pretty much withdraw uh, your participation in any future IPOs. Now you gotta remember, in the market of finance, there's gonna be from both sides, from the institutional clients as well as the retail clients. Now imagine all of these retail clients withdraw their money from the IPO markets. This means that they simply will not have enough capital available for any future flotations or IPOs. 
So essentially, we say that the Winner's Curse says that in order to ensure these unsophisticated investors to continuously partake in all future、uh, flotations or IPOs, we need to ensure that we, on average, underprice an IPO. For example, once every ten、uh, times.、Okay? Now, the second one is about the market feedback. Yes. Now, what exactly is market feedback? Now, imagine I try to sell you、uh, my iPhone. Yes, I say, look, Xiaoping's iPhone. I'm going to sell it for one dollar USD. Now, you probably think that, hey, this is actually quite cheap. Yes, and everybody wants it. Now, what this means that if you deliberately underprice something, it allows the market to compete with each other in order to reveal、uh, what they truly believe that your phone is worth. Yes, so we say that underpricing is a way to induce this market feedback from our investors. Okay. Now the third topic is about this bandwagon. Yes. Now what exactly is this called bandwagon? Now imagine that something is cheap. Yes. Everybody talks about it, and wherever you go, you see about this IPO. Now, this means that if something is cheap,、uh, everybody wants a piece of it. Yes. Now, imagine everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. So, what he's trying to say is that it creates perceived、uh, popularity or excess demand amongst shareholders. So, this is another way to engage what we call the momentum of the roadshow. Yes. So, a bandwagon is essentially a way to create this popularity and this excess demand because it is underpriced. Okay. Now the fourth one is called the investment bankers, monop, Sony Power. Yes. Now investment banker monop Sony Power. Now what exactly does this mean? Now imagine that you are a private company CEO like Jack Ma. Yes. So Jack Ma goes to the U.S. market and say, "Look, I want to sell my share for ninety-eight dollars per share." Now. The CEO、um, of the lead investment bank, for example, Morgan Stanley, will say, "Well, look, Jack,、um, this market is not yours. You have absolutely no idea how does the U.S. financial market works." So essentially, the investment bankers will try to use their monopoly or monopoly power to force the CEO of the private company to reduce its price. Now, the rationality comes down to why. Yes. Now, think about it. Investment bankers、uh, has two things that is very important to them. Yes, one is to sell or help the company to float. Yes, but two, they have this thing called this underwriting. Yes, now underwriting is essentially what we call this insurance element, right? So if the IPO fails and if you are underwriter, then this means that you need to buy up the remaining shares at a predetermined price to help this company float. So essentially, what we're trying to do here is that by using the investment bank monopoly power, it is a way to ensure it is underpriced in a way that it can achieve a successful、uh, float. Yes. So the bankers are using their power to deliberately push down the price in order to achieve a more of a successful、uh, float. Okay. Now, the next one is about this lawsuit. Uh, avoidance, yes. Okay, now you guys are probably still aware with the Facebook IPO, yes. So with the Facebook IPO, within the first two weeks, I think the stock price dropped about thirty percent. Now imagine you are an investor, and you invest one million dollars into the Facebook IPO, and within two to three weeks, you lost about three hundred thousand dollars. Now how do you feel? You feel absolutely terrible. So what this means is that you will look very detailed into the prospectus. Now, who writes the prospectus?、Uh, it is the investment banks、uh, who writes these prospectus, right? And by all means,、uh, they are all humans who write prospectus. That there will be a small degree、um, of human mistakes or could be misleading information into the prospectus. So what he's trying to say is that. Um, if there is a massive loss, yes, in terms of the initial IPO, then all of your investors is going to pick bones from the eggs just to pick out these little mistakes and say, "Look, you lied to me, you misled me," which means that、um, I'm actually going to sue you、uh, for the amount of loss. 
So essentially, why underprice? If I underprice, I sell it to you for $68. And the first day, it is worth $98. Now you made a huge gain on the first day. Now are you happy? Well, yes, of course. But which means that am I still gonna sue you? Well, no, because you're making money. Why should I be suing you? So this is not the argument which is used for uh, underpricing, yes? Now, the six is what we call signaling, yes? Now, signaling is very similar towards uh, the number five. Now, what exactly is uh, signaling, yes? Now, essentially, coming back to my last example, imagine that you are a participant within the Alibaba IPO. Now, in the first day, you actually made a lot of money. Now, it leaves kind of a good taste uh, in your mouth, right? It's like, well, God, Jack Ma, you're my man. Because essentially, in the first day, you made like a 30% gain, yes? Now, what does it mean by signaling? Imagine your investors or your shareholder was happy by your initial public offering. Now, does this mean the company will not need any more equity in the future? Well, hell no. Because the idea is that as a company floats, it will require more and more funding for its projects. So this means that signaling ensures that you leave a good taste in your shareholders which facilitates any future equity raisings. And that's why we need to underprice. Now, the last one is about this ownership uh, dispersion, yes? Okay. Now, ownership dispersion, what does it mean? Now, imagine that the stock for Alibaba is worth $10,000 per one share. Well, it might be pretty much very rich to buy their shares, right? Now, imagine that each, each share is like $10,000. I'm going to make a more ridiculous example, like a million dollars, yes? Now, this means that not many shareholders uh, will be actually uh, afford these shares, right? So this creates a situation where we call block shareholders, yes? Now what does it mean by block shareholders? Imagine Alibaba, it's a multi-billion dollar company, yes? And it only owned by three categories of major investors, right? One, two, three, okay? Now this means that uh, it only takes about two investors uh, to decide or to reject the CEO or defy the CEO. So which means that if you have too much of a block shareholders, then you will have too much influence on this public company, which means that the CEO of this company uh, becomes powerless, yes? And that's why underpricing as a last way, which is to create this ownership dispersion, is because if you deliberately uh, reduce this price, it allows everybody or every household to participate uh, in this particular IPO, which means that you have a lot more uh, shareholders rather than block shareholders, right? So what this is trying to say is that by deliberately or underpricing, this creates this ownership dispersion and it makes it a lot harder for these shareholders to call each other up, to collaborate or to cartel in order to, uh, to drive out the CEO, yes? So the last argument is more about saying that, well, if I underprice, I'm going to have a bigger uh, client base, which means that the CEO can retain more power in terms of driving the company towards uh, the future, yes? So given the time constraints, so today I'm only going to talk about the seven key, key reasons uh, in terms of underpricing. Now look, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So please like us on our Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel and continuously look at our YouTube channel because I'll be uploading a lot more videos to come. And if you're happy, please feel free to leave more comments. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.